Welcome everyone to this next interview of the She Shakes the World interview series with me, Rachel Waite, founder of the She Shakes the World movement. And today I have the beautiful Niti Nadaraja with me. Um, oh, you're going to love listening to everything that she has to share. Um, Niti and I have not met personally. She's based over in Melbourne. And actually I reached out to Niti probably about two months ago because I saw her post on LinkedIn. They were so powerful and, and I could see that Niti had so, so much to share and that she was passionate about. And I just knew that I just needed to reach out to her and invite her and get to know her and invite her onto this interview series. So Niti, welcome. Do share with everyone who you are, what, what it is that you do and how you love to shake the world. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Um, so I... Big Who am I? So it's a big question, actually, and you Take know, your time. it's 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 <laughs> it's one that I've been thinking about a lot of late because I'm actually in a transition phase at the moment, yeah. and just to, just about to announce my new venture um, in a week or so, and so I have been a lawyer for my entire career, which is about 19 years, and. A couple of months ago, I left my job and decided I was going to do something very different. So I have decided to um, move into coaching and I'm going to um, hopefully be working with women like me who work in similar types of industries, the legal profession, for example, who have children and who are struggling with that whole sort of, you know, I'm a mum, I'm a career woman who am I in yeah. the midst of all of that? And what do I really want? And how do I manage everything that I've got on my plate? Because, you know, as I, I was, as I was saying to someone the other day, it's kind of like a sandwich. We like, you know, we have our career, then we become a mum, and we just kind of dump it on top of the career bread and yeah. fillings. And we go, now I've got to do it all. And now I've got to take a bite of this entire big sandwich somehow without having things fall out of it and inevitably things fall out of it right I love that so that imagery yeah so that's that's kind of what I want to help people with is go okay what do you really need in this sandwich what can you take out of the sandwich and what's essential to be in the sandwich yes make it the sandwich that you want to eat not the one that people expect you to eat yes the people I love that not the one that people expect you to eat Niti, how yeah. has it been? Like, because I feel that there's so so many maybe women in similar situations to you who who have that desire for change. They feel like there's more. Like you, you've had this wonderful, amazing career as a senior lawyer, you know, and been for nearly twenty years. And suddenly to go, oh, there's something else that I want to step into. I'm not sure what mm. that is yet, but I know I have to. I have to, you know, leave this, this safe career this 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 job that I've mm. been so established in for so long how what what would you say to someone who's in a similar situation has those similar desires to want to change to do something different and transition into a new phase a next phase how, yeah. how has that been for you and, and how have you taken that courage to go I'm going to do this yeah it's been it's been interesting. I mean, I've sort of been thinking about it for a couple of years now. I think the start of the pandemic sort of really woke me up and made me go, do you know, there are all these things I've been thinking about doing at some point in the future. Um, so, for example, using my voice for social justice and, and to talk about causes that I'm really passionate about. And I just hadn't done it. And when the pandemic hit and I've got autoimmune issues, it really brought my mortality in front of my face and made me go, I may not have it tomorrow. So if I want to do something, I've got to do it today, right? But then yeah. I sat there I for two years going, mm, I don't know, I'm not sure. Am I ready? Do I need to do more before I start? I need to be more ready, you know? And there's this idea I think we have sometimes that, it needs to be the perfect moment when we do something, you know, whatever that something is. We do it when we, even when we have children or we plan to have children, I did it, you know, is this the right time, yeah. you know? And it's the same thing with starting something new. We get in our heads about it. And eventually I think, you know, I just sort of went, I have to do this because yeah. it's 
purpose, its meaning, it's the stuff I want to do to bring joy back into my life and to really lift my energy and also to be of service to others, which was kind of the thing that I discovered was really my purpose in life was yeah. really giving to other people. And so I was like, I've got to do it. And what would I say to women who are in this spot? I would say, you're not going to know what it's like unless you give it a go. And nothing that you've done before, none of your career, your qualifications, none of that goes away in an instant. So give it a go, be brave, try it. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to what you knew before, you know, but yeah. you can't go forward unless you take that step. That's yeah. what I would say. Such, such, I, as you were saying that, it's, I, 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 I feel everything that you were saying. I think otherwise you just say that, that bit stuck and you're not, yeah. you're, not moving, you, you're just, and you, you're in a sort of um, no man's land. Exactly. As I, exactly. Yes, as I see it. Yes. And it does, yeah. it does, uh, it does take courage to, to change. And, and, and because that means that other, um, because you're changing, then you, you've got the sort of, what will other people say? What will other people think? You've got all that going on at the same time. And then you've got the fear of where will my income come from? And, and I think sometimes mm. once you make that decision and make that step, sometimes those things become clearer to you. Yes. Would you say? Yes, that, I think that's happened? right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. And look, and I have felt all of that, you know, financial mm -hmm. security has always been important to me. Yeah. And, you know, I've got kids, I've got a mortgage, I've got bills to pay. So it was important, you know, how am I going to earn an income yes. going forward? And is this new thing that I'm starting going to pay the bills or is it, do I need something else? And so what I've decided on is effectively a portfolio career move and so I'm like I'm going to do a bit of this and a bit of that so I'm going to do some freelance legal work as well on the side yes. and that's kind of my way of going do you know what I can do both of these things whilst I establish a coaching practice I can also continue doing legal work because I know it and I'm good at it and it's yeah. what I've done for so long so you know I think this is the thing too you know there's so many options out there for people now I was just you don't necessarily you yeah, you don't need to take a giant leap off the cliff, right? You can yeah. take smaller steps. And someone said to me, oh, but, you know, if you do that, you're, it's going to take longer for you to get to the destination and perhaps it'll be harder. And I said, yes, maybe, maybe. But, you know, if it's a decision between not doing something because you can't jump off that cliff yeah. and doing something knowing it might take you longer to get there, to get to the bottom of the cliff, I would say do the latter, you know, do tingles. it whichever way you need to do it, yes. you know. Tingles, absolute tingles yeah. as you said that because you can then enjoy, it's like you can enjoy the process and the journey on the way. And mm. I think from someone who's been through a transition as well, there's so much evolving and growing and learning you need to do on this process. It's, it's I don't know if you found this, but suddenly you're uncovering things about yourself, you're learning things about yourself. And actually, if you were to literally just jump off the cliff, you would miss all that. And actually, there's a lot of internal yes. growing and shifting and evolving that you need to do in this process of changing and stepping into something different. I think it makes absolute sense to do it bit, bit by bit by bit, because you're going to grow mm. and you'll grow into that I think your new role, your what you're evolving into in a much fuller, evolved way. A hundred percent. And I think it's it's interesting. I mean, I've learned a lot about myself just in the couple of months that I've had time away from work and not been in my business yet either. Because I think when I was straddling two worlds, as I like to call it, because I was straddling two worlds for a bit, you know, the world of my career and this new venture that I was mm. hoping to get into. It, I was just busy, you know, I was so busy. And I was trying to think about this new thing I was starting whilst also being busy at work and, you know, handing things over and all the rest of it. And when I stopped, it actually was a bit of a shock to the system. Mm. And I've realized over these two months, just how much I replace busy with busy, you know, oh, and it's, it's taken me conscious effort to go, 
do you know what? You need to say no to some things. You need to take time out for yourself. Go and have a massage, but not even go and have a massage. Go and just sit on the couch and read a book for a bit. Go for a walk. You know, you don't need to constantly be doing something because there was almost this urge initially to spend all my free time building the business, right? And going, okay, there must be other things I need to do. There must be other, you know, logistics or other paperwork or something that I need to do to set this thing up. And I was like, you need to stop and enjoy the time. And in enjoying that time and having that headspace, I've realized actually there's so much more clarity when I give myself that space to think because we don't often give ourselves that space. And it's so important. I've actually realized as a result of it, I don't know that I want to be busy five days a week, every week. You know, maybe it's three days doing my legal stuff, one day doing my coaching, and maybe I have a day to myself where I'm like, okay, I can just, you know, blue sky thinking and I can spend some time just with myself you know and it's not even about spending time with family although I love my family it's really just having that time for me and just leaning back into who I am what I want to do and doing things with intention and purpose yes I hope people listening really hear this about this about being busy because I think it really can be a vice for many of us we we feel like we we, we ought to be busy or, or we need to be busy or we need to show that we're busy. Mm. And sometimes we fill our diary up to avoid ourselves because to not have a yes. void, to not have the time, to not have the space because then we don't, we have, we can avoid our thoughts, we can avoid our feelings, we can avoid thinking about things that perhaps we've been putting off thinking about. And actually it takes a lot of courage to have space, to have silence, to not put something in the diary, to it's 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 something it's a real skill it's a real art to Mm. to to develop and and honor yourself and give yourself that time because some people are so scared of the silence they fill it up with things so they don't have to get connect with themselves or what what might be 100 percent yeah Yeah. very true and i have to say it's an evolving journey for me i can't say i've mastered it at this point in time it's 19 probably more than 19 it's probably through my entire schooling as well you know so it's many 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 years of conditioning um that i need to unravel but you know slowly i think this this time away has allowed me to think differently and it was interesting my coach actually said it to me um earlier this year and he said you you, sat, you you keep like doing and you're talking about doing so much. You might want some time, you know, to step back from it all. And I was like, yeah, you're here. And I doing that? And I think I thought I was like literally giving myself time. Yes. And he was like, you're just rushing ahead. You're rushing like five steps ahead. You don't need to. Mm. And so it's interesting. You do, you do have to unlearn a lot, I yes. think. And yes. I'm on that journey now yeah it is it, yeah I, it's, it's and it's a fascinating journey to very fascinating yeah. journey i i know niti also that um for you something really important that you're a massive advocate for is helping women empower them to find and have a voice and share their voice and i know it's been a journey for you over the past couple of years and over on linkedin actually for you to begin to share that and mm. how important is it do you think for women to feel that they have a voice and that they can share their voice and that they have a voice that people need to hear and and and, and, and a bigger question how important is that in terms of encouraging women to shape the world oh so important you know <laughs> i mean i think we have so many stories within us and often these stories are, they're untold, you know. Um, my journey began on LinkedIn a couple, couple of years ago. I had been dabbling in it a little bit before then, but properly began two years ago. And I remember the most um, scary thing I shared initially in those first few months was the story of my pregnancy losses. And I had always known, like for about a year and a half, two years before then, that I wanted to share this story to the point that I'd written the story in my, not written it, I'd said it to myself so many times in the shower that I had the story written already you know so when I actually sat down to write it it didn't take any time at all because I knew it back to front and I knew it was something that needed to be to be spoken about because there's so much silence that surrounds it and you know it's the same around 
women's health issues, around things like menopause, around, you know, there's so much that is so taboo and that's not spoken about. So I think if we're to change any of these things, really big things that need change, then we need to start telling these stories. And it's not easy. It takes courage to do that. But the thing is, once you start doing it and the more you do it, the less courageous it feels because it becomes it becomes a story that you tell from a place of purpose and meaning yeah. rather than from a place of deep hurt, yeah. you know, um, and grief. So for me, initially, it was hurt and grief. And when I shared this um, story, I got all these messages back from people sharing their own stories. And I was pretty distraught for a couple of days. I had to you know, take a lot of time out for myself because it was making me very emotional um, and I was struggling a little bit, but also empowered by the fact that people were sharing these stories. So it was a mixed feeling, right? Over time, as pe- as I've shared this more and more, I don't feel as emotional about it. The emotion is still there. You know, the emotion of what I went through will never go away, but I know now that I sit in a pa- place of strength yeah. And that by sharing this, it helps other people, it helps remove stigmas, it helps talk about something that is otherwise taboo. And I think that's so important because, you know, we women have to talk about these stories because these are stories that, yes, do affect others as well, not, not just women, they obviously affect other people too. Yeah. Um, but in large part, they affect women, right? You know, so even you know, women's health stories, for example, you know, if we're talking about things like endometriitis or um, menopause, they're stories that we have to tell. And only through telling them can we achieve change. Um, So yeah, I think it's critical and we should lean into it. I I, I totally agree with you. And remember, we we were talking earlier about how actually you know, if if we all do our little part to share, our, mm. you know, if we if we if we can and we feel ready to to find the courage to share our message, to share our stories, to really step into our, step into our purpose, how however much courage that takes, we can all mm. uh, in our small way have this ripple effect. And I think together, collectively, if we're all doing that, what a difference that will bring. Uh, yeah, how yeah, much beautiful. If we, if, we, if, we, if we all, and how you're sharing your story might help someone in a dark moment, you know, rise. And if we all, if we're all doing, I can see my hands are going like this because I can see like the <laughs> massive change it will make. And I think, yeah. um, I think hopefully people will take courage from, from you, you know, sharing your stories. Um, and hopefully that will encourage others to, to do the same. A hundred percent. You know, I, I think exactly what you said, the, the small things matter. And, you know, I, so even yesterday, I got a message from someone saying, you know, you'll be really pleased to hear this. I've had multiple people talk to me about miscarriage in the re- in the past few weeks. And there'd be people from different um, genders talking about it. And so, you know, it seems as if people are getting more comfortable having that conversation. Yeah. So she actually reached out to share that with me, which was yeah. brilliant. And yes. You know, it was the same um, a few weeks ago when I shared a post about colorism and um, my experience of experiences of that as a child and the number of women that have, you know, come to me and said, you know, let's have this conversation, let's create a conversation about this and talk about this more is, uh, it, it was astonishing, but, you know, it also means it's something that needs discussion around it and, you know, we might be here in this little pocket, you know, having a discussion on it, but then there'll be other people somewhere else having a discussion on it and other people somewhere else. And the more of these discussions you can have, the more normalized that the the conversation becomes normalized, you know, the unspoken becomes spoken, as I like to say, in the context of pregnancy loss, you know, that's what we need to do. Yeah. I'm feeling listening to this, that there are some people who are listening, as we're talking, there's some people listening and they have something inside of them that they, they, they want to do, that they want to share. And they're getting inspiration from listening to us right now. And just as one final question, Niti, what would you say to them, the, the people who are listening now, who, who are just at that moment where they're, 
they, they, they can't quite decide yes or no, I'm going to share this, or I'm going to make that change, or I'm going to do that thing that I've always wanted to do or not had the courage to do. Is there one little snippet of wisdom or advice you could share with them just to, mm. end, this, just to end this conversation? Yeah, I think you have to find a place of comfort within which to share it. So I think that's really important. You know, so for some people, sharing on social media is too scary, right? Yeah. And it's never going to happen. And that's it's absolutely not for everyone yes. to do that. You know, for me, weirdly, even though I... I'm not an introvert, but I'm now an ambivert. You know, it's even though I would not necessarily be comfortable in big group gatherings or things like that, for some reason, writing feels very safe and very comfortable yeah. because it's one way I have time to collect my thoughts. I can write it as I want, and then I can respond to comments and think about them as I'm responding. Right. But for other people that doesn't work. So, you know, is it that you need to, share it with friends is it sharing it with family is it um sharing it you know through the spoken word yeah. you know something else sharing it even anonymously you yeah. know you know it doesn't need to have your name attached to it you know finding a way to put that story out there in a way that doesn't make you feel so scared that you're going to shy away from doing it i love that yes I think that that's that's a, a that's a beautiful way of of of, of encouraging people. That's right because it, it, we want people to be able to come forward, like you said, but we don't necessarily want people to be too scared or too worried about mm. about doing it. So finding the comfortable way for you to do it is 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 the perfect place to start. Yeah, yeah, Nisi, this so. has been wonderful. I really enjoyed this conversation. I feel yeah, me too. I've got so much out of it. And I can't I always love to listen back to these and, and take all the golden nuggets from these conversations. So I'm really looking forward to listening back to this, to sharing it. And also I will share all your details on the on the notes as well. So people can reach out to you, they can connect with you, they can I really advise you if you're on LinkedIn to follow Niti on LinkedIn because the posts she makes are I every time I see them I've always got I get to take something from it. So do follow her and um, Niti, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining me. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.